Hi guys, Dave here from Wolf in the Basement. As you can tell, weather's been really horrible up here in Canada. Rain and sleet and snow and it's just been crazy and I haven't been able to get out to do any videos. So once again, it's that time of year where I'm kind of reduced to shooting a video or several down in my camp storage area um, just to keep some content flowing on my channel so you'll have to excuse the fact that I'm not in the woods. So as you can no doubt tell by today's title, the Rambo style survival knives. They became fairly popular after I believe it was the 1985 movie Rambo First Blood. He had this basically this be-all to end-all knife full of everything that he could possibly need and the usefulness and how great that knife was about as realistic as the fact that he never reloaded his machine gun until the movie John Rambo come out. Nevertheless, I absolutely loved the concept of the Rambo style survival knife. Now, this one here is a I think it was like it's an original, it's one of the cheaper ones, but it's original like 1986, 87 Rambo style survival knife. It's got like a it's it's probably not even real leather, but it's got a like a fake leather case. Oh yeah, definitely not. Um just absolutely cheap. Um these things fell apart probably the third, maybe fourth time you took them into the woods. They're so flimsy and and just crappy. Um but still like everybody probably under the age of, I don't know, maybe 12 or whatever. Everybody had these things. We just, we absolutely loved them until we got them and tried to use them in the woods. Um, now, this is, like, it's never been used. It's never been anything. It's, it's almost fresh out of the package. Um, like new condition, basically. So, I'm going to bring you guys in, and I'm going to show you what you get in these things back, you know, as, as kids when we first got them. Alright. So here we have the cheaper version. There, there were slightly more expensive versions that really, for the most part, weren't much better. Um, probably a better case. Uh, but most of the most of the equipment you get with it is pretty much standard. So the case, like I say, really, really super flimsy, thin, cheap, kind of pleather, naga hide, whatever. Um, fell apart quickly, like I said. And a sharpening stone. <laughs> These things did not work, man. They... Like, they, they kind of did, but they more or less didn't. You, you're not getting a very good edge on your knife with one of these things. And um, after, like, being banged around and, and kind of whatever, they, they tended to kind of break apart and turn to dust a lot of the time, too. Um, now, bear in mind, we were like, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 years old running around the bush with these things. Uh, we were really, really, really hard on our toys. So, so that just... Snaps right into the front. Um, cheap little uh, I, lanyard, I guess you would call that, or whatever. You're supposed to use that to tie it to your leg. That did not generally fit around most of our legs, all in all. Now, for the actual knife. Um, now, this particular one here is a Ruko that was made in Taiwan. Fairly typical to what you would find around, like, Muskoka uh, when we were kids. Not, 
very sharp at all. I mean, you know, you could you could cut kind of, uh, but not very sharp at all. And like I say, that stone didn't really do much. The sawback um, really it's 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 not really a saw. The bottle opener did kind of come in handy because you know we usually had a backpack and we had some sodas with us and you know I mean um, not all of them were twist top uh, back then so the the bottle opener did kind of come in handy from time to time. Uh, the compass. Now, yeah, most of the time they did not work at all, and this one doesn't work really. I mean, it's it's kind of pointing north, but you you really got to give it some time and play around with it. There's an air bubble going on in there, and it's... Very, very cheap. Not, not accurate, not one bit. And, oh, come on now, don't tell me this isn't going to, oh, okay, gotta, there we are. Uh, so, yeah, that's just a plastic thing on top there, uh, really flimsy. you got to be careful with those. Uh, they, you'll strip the threads right off of them really easily. Uh, the whole top comes off. And you get two key rings that you're meant to attach your wire saw with. And then... Let's see if I can... Yeah, there's probably just barely enough light. Maybe I can lighten that up in post. There's a nut and a bolt in there and a, and a washer. Now, after the second or third time being in the woods, I would commonly come home, I would find my father's ratchet set, and I would tighten that nut and bolt down uh, so that the, the blade wasn't wiggling and wobbling and all flimsy and, you know, spinning and, and whatever. I mean, they, they, um, <laughs> they, they, they did not last uh, very long at all. And eventually... Uh, tightening that thing down as much as I did. I ended up eventually stripping the bolt right off and it wouldn't tighten anymore. Here's the wire saw uh, that you get in the kit. Now generally the first time you use this thing it's gonna bust right in half. This thing is useless. Absolutely, totally, 100% useless. You cannot cut with this thing at all. Um, nice idea, and there are some wire saws out there that are actually worthwhile having in a, a minimalist, lightweight kit, you know, kind of whatever, if you know what you're doing and you're gentle with it and you don't, you know, you're not too hard on it. It, it, it will get the job done in a, in a bad situation, but when you're relying on something like that, that's not the way to go. Okay, the rest of the kit, still sealed from like 86, 87, never been opened before. And it is, it's taped, which actually, you know, I'll just cut the tape. There we are. And be really careful here. Now this teeny tiny little square, which is about the size of my pinky nail, is what you strike the matches on. <laughs> That's the match striker they give you. Crazy. And And then the wooden matches. One, two, three, four, five. Five wooden matches. 
Um, that's usually the second thing to go. Uh, we, as, as kids, you know, trying to light a fire, we weren't uh, super skilled at, you know, getting our, our stuff uh, prepared. And like I say, the, the saw breaks the first time you use it, so we're trying to get that together. And then, you know, we generally used up all the matches. All right. Let's just get these out of my way because I dropped them a lot. Two sewing needles. Because in the movie, Rambo slices his arm and he sews himself up with a couple of sewing needles and some fishing line. Just to show, you know, how badass he really is. Okay. This fishing line, um, it's, it's very, very, very lightweight. Okay, now, just to, to give you an idea, all right, there's one of the hooks that, oh, here we go. Now, I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but that is incredibly small, like, perch and sunfish basically or minnows i mean you're not getting much off of those especially with this line now i did catch a perch using this little fishing kit and the perch one of them was able to break this line this is not good line at all and then as aforementioned fishing hooks we got one two three four, five. They're all the same size and they're just so incredibly small. Like you're, you're basically catching minnows. And then there's three sinkers that are, put these off to the side for a second. These things are so small I, I can't imagine, I know it wouldn't make a frog sink. All three of them wouldn't make a frog sink. Uh, a worm, sure, yeah. Um, a, uh, you know, like a good size grasshopper. It, it'll, it'll not really make a grasshopper sink. They're so uh, small, so lightweight. And I don't remember mine being like all light lightly colored like that mine were lead weights i don't know what those are they, they might be just have some sort of a corro there's like a powder coating on them or whatever maybe that's to i don't know protect them from corrosion or whatever but mine were lead when i got them. so yeah three split shot weights so the there, there is a little bit more space that you could probably put a little more gear in there, but I've, oh, it's, it's about that much space. Like a ring finger is what you're getting. You're, some pill bottles have more storage space than that. Like, okay, where's my canoe seat? I got a, yeah. I got a pill bottle in my canoe seat that I normally keep uh, a little uh, extra fishing kit in. I used it the last time I was out and uh, that is that's about your standard size pill bottle basically. You're, you're looking at around the same amount of space. You're not getting a whole lot of useful equipment in here and even if you were to strip everything out of it and put high quality gear in here, what little space you have, you're still talking about a knife that is hollow inside with a nut and a bolt. There it is. And it does not stay tight. There's not a lock washer in there, which I guess you could put a lock washer in there to save yourself uh, some issue. But the first time you try to use this knife for anything other than extreme light duty, you're going to break it. Okay, the handle 
is just plastic. It's just sort of a uh, impact plastic. The the knife itself, it's just cheap, cheap steel. It does not hold an edge. Um, it's not even really like actual stainless or whatever. It's just really cheap steel. It's The, the idea of it is just, it, it, it draws kids in. It really does. I mean, it drew me and most of my friends in. Um, unfortunately, it's about as practical, like I say, as, like, you know, Rambo never reloading his machine gun for, like, four and a half movies. Now, I'm not 100% sure even where this thing came from, to be honest. Um, I was up at my cottage, and my mom and dad were doing um, like a bunch of cleaning, renovations, uh, kind of whatever, and they found it, and... Nobody knew even where it came from. It didn't, you know, actually belong to anybody. And, I mean, all in all, nobody really wanted it. You know, everybody knows that they're no good. Um, so it was given to me as a novelty, basically. Just sort of a, you know, for a LARF. Um, and it's been sitting down here in my camp area for the longest time. Until... Oh, I don't know. Earlier this week, I, I was sort of, you know, doing whatever, cleaning up. I came across it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a video about this because I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, who have never seen these things or, you know, maybe they've heard of them, maybe they've seen them, but they, you know, they've never been inside them or, you know, kind of whatever. And, it, you know, for the novelty of it. And uh, all in all, like I say, I absolutely fell in love with the concept of the Rambo-style survival knife as a kid. We all had them. We destroyed these things so quickly. For any younger person, any new person getting into the hobby or, you know, kind of whatever, you see one of these things and you fall into the same mindset uh, that I did when I was a kid, save your money, guys. Do not buy one of these. Not recommended. <clears throat> As for a proper, actual, bushcrafting, survival knife, um, kind of whatever. This is almost exactly what I would recommend that you look for. <clears throat> the case is durable. It doesn't have to be uh, impact plastic or Kydex or whatever. It, it could be, you know, nylon. It could be, um, you know, good leather, you know, kind of whatever. But just something that's that's going to be durable, basically. Something that, you know, it, it will last almost as long as your knife will, basically, is, is what you're looking for. Um, a sharpening stone on the case. Uh, you know what, most of those little ones are garbage, they don't really do very well. I would recommend a small diamond hone made by Buck. Um, I can't remember exactly what I paid for it, but it is affordable. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, don't don't fall in for those you know sharpeners that come on the the sheath because they're they're normally no good um, normally normally um, a uh, a whistle and a ferrocerium rod however 
These come in really, really handy, especially this ferro rod. Um, I go for a walk in the woods and I'm not carrying a whole bunch of stuff. I at least have this here. I can get a fire going with that. Okay, and if it doesn't rain or heavily snow and it's not super, super windy and gross out, I don't really need a shelter. Okay, I get a fire going, I'm good. Um, and, I mean, given enough time, natural materials and this knife, I guess I could make uh, a small, suitable lean-to just to get me out of a light rain or a light snow. So, I mean... That's a bit of an endeavor, though, especially, you know, if you're just using a knife, uh, you know, batoning wood and whatever, you're probably looking at two to four hours to, you know, build a small shelter. So, but uh, I digress once again. Okay, as for the knife itself. Solid construction. Full tang. That's what you want right there. That hollow handle over there. No good. You want a nice full tang knife. You're looking at, oh, what is that? Like three, four inches, three and a half inches, something like that. Um, you don't necessarily need to be carrying around a sword. Um, you know, I mean, a decent machete, you know, is, is definitely a, a, an asset. Um, but... I mean, if all you're carrying around is just a bushcrafting knife, then you at least want like a three and a half, four inch blade. Um, any smaller than that, uh, you're, you're starting to get into territory where it might not be as versatile as like something like this. Uh, although the Mora knives, they are a little bit smaller. The Mora knives are actually the bare minimum in size. They're, they're really, really good knives to the, the price point. Now, here is my one problem with this knife. That's, it's like a hollow grind. Scandi grind is definitely the way to go. If you can get a, a, a good knife similar to this uh, with Scandi grind, go for it, definitely. And, um, a, an excellent example is the Condor Bushlore. That is an awesome knife. Um, carbon steel, not stainless. Uh, that is a matter of opinion over which is better. You know, some people like one, some people like the other. I personally would like to have uh, a, a carbon blade, but not having to take care of this thing um, because it's high carbon stainless, uh, is, it is nice. It's, it's not too bad. So that really is, uh, I guess the long and short of this video. Um, a, an interesting idea, a, a fairly decent take, I guess you could say. Um, really, <laughs> no, uh, and I, I, I wish so bad that it, it actually was a, a good idea and it did work out and whatever, but, you know, it just, it's, it's a kid's fantasy. What are you going to do? Something like this here is, is what you're going for. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, um. I hope that, uh, I, you know, that some of you guys, you know, got a kick out of seeing the, the little things that you get in, in these novelty Rambo survival knives. Um, you know, I certainly did back in the day when I was a kid. And uh, I hope that helps somebody to avoid uh, a gimmick and uh, go for something that's actually going to last you. So, see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good one. And uh, Merry Christmas.